Hi, I'm Stephanie Rublitz. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking all things rolled hem foot. All right, so we all know there's more than one way to roll a hem. And for most of my sewing life, I have always picked the longest painful ways to do it because... I don't know, I guess I was just too stingy to buy the rolled hem foot. But at Christmas time, I was like, nah, I'm gonna treat myself to that. I think it was like, I don't know, it wasn't that much even. I don't know why in my head I always think this stuff's gonna be more expensive than it is. But I was doing my Christmas dress, so I really wanted to try a rolled hem foot for the flounce that I put on the bottom. Now I basically just wanna roll hem all the things, all the time. And for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere who are, you know, looking at creeping up on spring and summer. I mean, obviously it's gonna be different depending on where you are, but we're coming into the season of tank tops, flowy skirts, nice light things made out of nice light fabric so that we're not dying of heat. And I thought, well, maybe this is a really good time for us to go over all the things that you can do with your rolled hem foot, how to use it, tips and tricks, get the best results, all the rolled hem things. So let's do that. So first of all, let's talk about our tools, most specifically the feet. So you can see this one has a six, that one has a four. These two are unnumbered, but I'll show you what those numbers mean. So there's these little grooves on the backs of all of these. These are the undersides. And that is the groove that's supposed to allow your rolled hem to come through. So this is six millimeters wide, four millimeters wide, and these two are three millimeters wide. And so that corresponds to the numbers that are on the top here. Now, now these two are both three millimeters and the biggest difference between these two is this one has a much wider area for your needle to work. So if you were gonna do a scalloped edge or something like that, which we're about to get to, um, you would wanna use this one because your needle would just wind up smashing into this foot. So really, other than that, that's the only difference I can ever, I've ever been able to see between the two. This one has a bit more of a lip kind of up at the back here, but I don't know. I don't know. If you know of a reason why a, a set would need to come with two three millimeter feet other than that, like I, to me, I'm just like, why wouldn't you just always have that one and like not worry about this one? But then when I see the sets of three, they're usually like the one that has the narrower, um, needle cut out. So when you're when you're looking at them online or in a store, make sure that you kind of pay attention to that. Um, I have linked these below just in case you're interested and it is an affiliate link. The other part of the anatomy that we need to look at is we need to look at, see that cone right there? So there's sort of the cone and then there's kind of like this little, this little arm right in here. So the cone, obviously, is what helps your fabric curve around. Um, but that little arm, if you don't get your fabric kind of hooked under that little arm just right, that's going to cause you some problems too. So we're going to get around to how you go about all this. This does take a bit of time um, to really kind of get proficient at. If you are feeling like um, you need this for a dress that you're supposed to wear to a wedding tomorrow... <laughs> Maybe pick a different kind of hem. Give yourself some time to really learn this. Um, just otherwise it's one of those things that's just going to be frustrating and then maybe you're never going to try it again. Um, before we move on though, let's talk about other tools. So a lot of people swear by having tweezers to help get the fabric into the cone properly. I myself prefer an awl. I, f I can stick it into the fabric and manipulate the fabric that way or I can just stick it in and kind of follow the cone to sort of drag the fabric around. So that's what I use. Go ahead, I mean, try both, see what works for you. I mean, I mean, really even like a pair of hemostats like this, like medical hemostats, um, I use these for threading my serger. They might even be useful. I mean, you really just gotta find what's gonna work for you, all right? So right now I'm gonna show you what works for me. All right, so the first thing I do is I just finger press my rolled hem in place because the first few stitches you're going to be sewing without it going through the funnel of the foot. So I get that pressed down and then I put it underneath my foot. Now I'm going to take a few stitches forward and then a few stitches back just to start that seam. Then I'm going to raise my foot and pull my fabric up into that cone. 
Then I'm going to take my awl and I'm just going to sort of trace inside the funnel to pull my fabric through. It's a bit tricky. I mean, it's a bit tricky anyways, but it's really tricky when you've got a camera in between you and your face and the foot. Um, but yeah, just keep pulling it around. The really big key is getting it around that bar that's inside the funnel. So this is what it's going to look like when it's in there and looks can be deceiving. So remember how I said there's that bar inside the funnel, right? Well, it's right about here. And you can see how the edge of my fabric is running all the way against that bar. If at any point the fold of your fabric is pulled back and not running against that bar, you're gonna have problems. This is where people get frustrated because it'll look like everything's in and then you'll start stitching away. The first few stitches will be great and then it all kind of goes to pot after that. So if you get your edge of your fabric running the complete length of that bar, you're golden. Everything will work out fine for you. Once that's all together, I can lower my foot and I just pre-fold in front of my foot as I'm running it through. It just is gonna ensure that you get a really nice hem because this really is a pain in the butt to have to go back and unpick um, and do it all again. So it just, gives you a much better chance of having a really nice finish. And that's really all there is to it. It's just the finicky bit of getting it in the foot that can cause people problems. Now you might notice on the other side of my fabric there, I've got sort of a scalloped edge. The process for doing that is exactly the same as what we've done here, except I'm going to choose a different stitch, which is this one, the blind hem stitch. So go ahead and play around with that stitch and play around with your tension while you're doing that because you're gonna get a bit of a different look depending on what your tension is. All right, so here are my completed seams. You can see the nice finish that I've gotten on my plain rolled hem. And here's that scalloped edge with the blind hem stitch. And you can see as I've gone down the line, I've increased my tension. So you can see that there's a bit more of a pucker, a bit more of a gather um, towards the end of that strip there. So really just play around with it and see what looks cool to you. Well, there you have it. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any other rolled hem tips and tricks that I didn't mention here, make sure you put them in the comments below so that everybody can benefit from everybody else's experience and knowledge. I am but one person. Or if you've never used a rolled hem foot before, let me know what way you're excited to use it and if you think that you're gonna give it a try. If you found this video was helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up because it really helps my channel. Subscribe below if you haven't already. And that's all I have for you right now. I will see you next week. Or if you've never used a roll, let's get on that rolled hem. Meh, meh. No, well, that was terrible. Feet, foot, foots. There's more than one rolled hem foot, but I feel weird calling them rolled hem feet.